Hey, it's your girl Brie and in this video I am going to show you how to recreate a top that Victoria was wearing in one of FX's performance of Four Walls. These four walls. <laughs> to four walls a lot lately I just I don't know I just fell back in love with it for some reason and I've been watching a lot of their performance videos and in one of their performance videos they were wearing these like black and red outfits and Victoria was wearing this long red tunic and I was like girl girl that is hot I need that. So I decided to recreate it for all of y'all. Um, yeah, if you're new here, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Um, also make sure to give this video a thumbs up and stick around to the end because I'll be checking in with you guys there. For this tutorial, you're going to need two yards of a pure red, bright red fabric. Victoria's tunic was made out of a sweater material, but I couldn't find the right color in the sweater fabric, so I went with a lightweight crepe fabric that had quite a bit of movement and the color was just perfect. You'll want to grab a 7 inch zipper for the closure so we can get it in and out of our tunic, and what good is a zipper if you can't make it dance? Okay. Starting with the front piece, I used a top that fits me well as a pattern and then cut it out from there. You'll want to lengthen the hem at the bottom, obviously, and you'll want it to hit about mid-calf or so. Honestly, how long you make it is up to you. We just want it to be long, okay? The back is actually two pieces because we want room for the closure. You heard me? You can just cut out the back piece and then cut it in half straight down the back. For this top, we want to add two bust darts, so one on the left side and one on the right side. And our dart is going to start three inches down from the armpit hole and it's going to be one inch wide. So you want to mark three inches down and then an inch from that three inch mark. I've made darts before, so if this is boring for you, sorry about it, but it's muy importante, okay? So I'm going over it again. Our dart also needs to be four inches long and we'll start with the top line that needs to be straight so you're just going to mark a straight line and then the bottom line will be at an angle meeting the straight line so then take your chalk and draw from there meeting the straight line quick tip when pinning the dart put your pin in through one line and make sure it comes out the opposite side lined up with the other line then going back in through that line come out the opposite side and you're gonna keep on doing that until your dart is perfectly pinned going in one side coming out the other then going through that side again and coming out the opposite side then once it's perfectly pinned you want to make sure that you know double check yourself make sure that it's right and then sew that using a straight stitch here I am just checking out my darts because an artist should always admire their work <laughs> Wolves. but seriously always check your work before moving on to the next step you don't want to get too far and realize you made a mistake Moving along to the back, we are going to put our two back halves right sides together, making sure everything is lined up perfectly. You don't want anything to be mismatched. That would be super bad. Lay down your zipper with the top of the zipper lined up with the top of the back halves. We want to mark where the zipper ends with the pin. This pin serves as a marker. We are going to sew the back together using a straight stitch, but everything above the pin you want to sew with a longer or a looser stitch since we are going to undo it later. And everything below the pin we want to sew with a shorter stitch since we'll be keeping that forever baby. Next up, lay open that seam and place your zipper in the opening. Obviously, we're going to match the top of our 
zipper with the top of our neck hole and then we are going to stitch that into place using a straight stitch going down one side and then um, across the bottom and then up the other side once it's stitched into place take your seam ripper and undo those loose stitches take your time with this step okay like you don't want to catch the fabric and make a hole it is so bad and it just is not worth it okay so take your time especially because this is a delicate fabric you definitely want to move slowly and purposely making sure to only tear the thread not the fabric and then get rid of those excess threads and cut 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 then make sure the zipper zips and works. Spoiler alert, it works. Okay. Now we are cooking with grease. With our front piece right side up, we are going to lay down the back piece, making sure our right sides are touching, and then sew them together using a straight stitch at the shoulder. We had to mention this at the beginning, but to finish our armpit holes and neck holes, we are going to need a few one and a half strips, specifically three of these. Okay, three, three. Lay open the top so you are looking at the top of the shoulder seam. Take one of our strips and fold it in half. You're going to line up this fold with the shoulder seam and start pinning it to the curve. Once the strip is pinned into place, you are going to attach it using a straight stitch. Once we've sewn it down, we are going to fold the strip under. So now the wrong side of the strip is touching the wrong side of our top. And we are going to press that down with an iron. You're going to move carefully and slowly to make sure everything is clean and even. So fold that strip so wrong sides are touching. And then take the iron and iron it down. You want to do this to both sides, obviously. Um, I think that goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. And then you're going to secure this in place using a top straight stitch. Now we're going to close up the sides. Victoria's top had a slit on both sides, so we are going to only sew up the side about 9 to 10 inches and then leave everything else open, okay? Only 9 to 10 inches is sewn up on the sides. Up next is finishing the neck hole. Taking our last fabric strip, fold it in half and line up that fold with the center of the front. And then you're going to start pinning from that center point. Once the strip is pinned into place, we are going to attach using a straight stitch. I like to start at the center and then stitch towards the back. This just allows it to be straight and even. The folding, ironing, and top stitching that we applied to the arm closure, we are also going to do in the neck closure. And you should have really nice, clean armholes and neck holes. Our last step is hemming the slits and the bottom. This part I'm going <laughs> to prepare you now is a bit tricky, so you might have to watch it a couple of times. But you're going to start with the long side, which is where the slits are, and you're going to fold that over and pin it into place. Then once you hit the corners, you're going to fold the corners in so that you have a nice triangle and then you're going to take the corners of that fold and fold those to towards the center i like to think of it as you know when we used to make those paper airplanes the first step is taking the corners of the paper and folding those in so that you have a nice crisp point that is what we're doing here so that we have a nice clean 90 degree angle at our corners and then we're going to top stitch this down all along the edge so that it is a nice clean hem and there it is in all of its bright cherry red glory it's beautiful just like you <laughs> okay i'm done
whatever. <laughs> well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you didn't do it earlier, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, also, follow me on Instagram. I definitely won't be posting pictures of myself wearing this top on there. So you don't want to miss any of those. Uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye! Oh,